All right, so in this video, I wanted to go over some of the um, strand nerfs mostly and buffs. Uh, these are some changes that Bungie came out and announced today in an article um, about their plans for season 22 and beyond for uh, a lot of most most of it was focused on strand there's a bunch of exotic reworks as well and there's some uh, arc titan nerfs um, to like tower and barricade cooldown and stuff like that nothing really significant pve wise for for arc titan but um, for the whole strand uh, subclass kit that is now going to uh, go through well the beginning of the next season it's going to go through some uh, some fairly drastic changes um, and a lot of them were, were expected and necessary really because let's face it suspend we all knew it was going to get nerfed at some point like we don't need to be able to suspend everything in the room and have them just hanging up in the air dangling for 12 seconds um, it was it's a little bit overkill I'm not going to say it wasn't, it's not fun. It wasn't a fun run. It was, but, uh, usually if, a, if you're able to suspend an enemy for like, um, a few seconds, that's enough time to, uh, to remove them as a threat and deal with other enemies or just to kill them while they're up in the air and not able to shoot you. I thought before Strand was even released, I thought that uh, suspended targets were going to be able to shoot back. So I was actually quite surprised that we would just be able, like when, when Strand released, we're, we're, we can suspend everything, and then they're they're not only suspended and not moving, they can't shoot their guns, they can't do anything. So I thought I thought it was a little bit overkill, like on the. Uh, like disabling them because we can freeze things already and when something's frozen they're totally neutralized they can't shoot you that's expected so I, I figured that suspend wasn't going to just be straight up better than freeze right but it is because not only are they disabled for like five times longer than they are on stasis freeze um, but while they're suspended, they, 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 they're literally frozen. They can't do anything. They can't shoot you. So I thought that was kind of cheesy. Like, I, I thought it was going to be good enough to actually just be able to suspend targets. And then, you know, you can go and take cover from them, even if they're shooting back. Or maybe they, they have reduced damage output or something like that. But, yeah. So suspend, like, this change has been, has been long overdue. So I'll just read through, uh, read through the article, and then I'll, I'll kind of give my thoughts um as we read through them <clears throat> and i'll hop on hop on to my uh titan here just because i feel like most of these changes um are going to affect berserker and abeyant leaps um i can't actually see strand on the pc because i don't own lightfall on pc yeah the game is cross save but it is not um, it is not cross pay like you gotta pay twice like so my main account is on PlayStation um, but I can still see the aspects and fragments which is what really matters um, so suspend reduce suspend duration versus non-champion PvE combatants from 8 seconds to 5 seconds I think that's perfectly fine. Five seconds is still going to be way more than enough time to uh, deal with targets. Thread of continuity uh, now extends this duration to seven seconds down from uh, 12 seconds. So thread of continuity, this is this fragment here that pretty much all of us has probably been using on our strand builds, uh, which increases the duration of suspend, unravel, and sever. That used to increase it by 50%, so you can get 12 seconds of suspend, which is like, that is enough time to suspend a champion on Grandmaster and one cycle it solo uh, before it even drops back down to the ground. That is, that is nuts. So now the most that you're gonna get is seven seconds. Five seconds without this fragment, seven seconds with this fragment. 
which in my opinion, I, th I still think that's good. Seven seconds is good. Reduced base suspend duration versus champion combatants from eight seconds to three seconds. Okay, so now like just forget about one cycling champions and just watching them dangle up in the air. Now they're basically just gonna be up there for a couple seconds uh, and then they're gonna be a threat again that you're gonna have to deal with. So I think that's good because I think that the way that suspend was working before where you can just suspend all champions was just like, what's the point of even having champions if you can just suspend them all? Like you can't do that on other subclasses. On, on stasis you can freeze them but then they basically unfreeze like um, a couple seconds later on um, on void you can suppress you can suppress enemies but you can't suppress champions um, so yeah like really suspend was one of a kind in that sense so I'm fine with that I think champions should be in the game and they shouldn't just be like shackled up in the air for the entire uh, for the entirety of the time that you're dealing with champions uh, so you can still get four seconds though if you're using thread of continuity instead of three Increased snap damage dealt by two suspended boss combatants by 67% so I don't know what that means. I'm assuming that means that um, Like you, if you throw your shackle grenade at a boss for example, you'll do less impact damage like you'll do 67% less impact damage because when you do shackle enemies like you do you do like some impact damage before they're before they're suspended up in the air um, okay so that so basically they're, they're just trying to make them completely useless for damage which is which is fine there, there there's damage grenades for strand anyways like there's um, the one with the uh, the threadlings Um, <clears throat> Thread of Mind, reduced class energy gain based on the tier of the defeated targets. Okay, so this is Thread of Mind. This is, this is a fragment that I always use on my Abeyant Leaps build for Titan because the whole build revolves around casting your barricade and throwing shackle grenades and just suspending everything. Um, so you want that uptime on your, bar on your barricade. Uh, so, I mean, it's a good aspect, and like I said, I use it in my build, but I don't think this is the end of the world. Um, this isn't even really all that, this isn't even a nerf the way I'm reading it. They're just saying that they're making, see, minor combatants reduced from 15% to 10%. So you defeat a minor combatant, now you're going to get 10% energy versus 15%. Not that much of a nerf to minor combatants. Major combatants uh, reduced from 25 to 50. Okay, wait. This is this is a this is a nerf. Threat of generation. I, I read this before already, so I was confusing it with generation. But yes, this is definitely a nerf to threat of mind. So this will affect class ability based builds like a Bant leaps and Dranger's lash on their barricade. You're just not going to get as many barricades from Threat of Mind, right? That's the one where you kill defeating suspended targets gives you class ability energy. So now this is basically just an all-around nerf to how much energy you get. And it's not a huge nerf. It's, it's, it's kind of a mild nerf in my opinion, especially because if you're, if you're already running 100 resilience like you should be on most builds, and especially Titan, then you're already getting the maximum cooldown on your barricade, so it's not like, you know, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. How it affects, um, like, Hunter and Warlock, I'm not so sure because there's really not that many class ability builds for Hunter and Warlock on Strand, unless you're, like, you know, really playing into ensnaring slam and like six coyote and you absolutely need to be able to do an ensnaring slam like every two seconds um then i guess it could affect that but you know maybe you'll have to you'll only be able to do an ensnaring slam every three seconds instead of every two seconds you know that's obviously a gross exaggeration but just saying and then for for warlock i mean like 
if you're really playing into your swarmers and, and casting your rift to send out those threadlings, then you know that could affect um, affect that as well. But a lot of these can just be mitigated with the, with having a hundred recovery or a hundred mobility on hunter. So not a not a big deal there. Threat of generation. So this is the one where it's not really a nerf; it's more of a, a balance. They they reduce the overall energy gain per damage event against PVE enemies by about twenty percent. So yes, that sounds like a nerf, um, right? Because so threat of generation, which is this one here, uh, which most of us are probably using on all of our strand builds, dealing damage generates grenade energy. It gives you a lot of grenade energy like so doing like poison tick damage um, or like a high fire rate uh, like a machine gun or an auto rifle or an SMG or a trace rifle uh, anything that is doing has a, a, a high RPM on, on its damage output is going to give you more grenade energy um, so they've reduced that overall grenade energy per event of damage, which is basically per tick, right? So for every bullet you hit or whatever, it's going to give you a, a set amount of, of grenade energy. That's the way it works right now. Now you'll get less, but they rebalance the energy gain multiplier across primary weapon archetypes. We wanted to bring the energy gains for dealing damage with precision weapons and fully automatic weapons closer together. Overall, we've reduced the efficiency of fully automatic primary weapons and increased the efficiency of precision primary weapons to compensate. So basically, they did what they should have done in the first place, uh, which is make the amount of energy that you get proportional to the amount of damage that you're doing instead of like per instance. Like if, if I use a level 1600... Um, 900 rpm smg in grandmaster content um and i'm dealing damage with that and i'm not doing any damage at all but i'm just doing like a lot of ticks of damage right i'll get i'll get more grenade energy than somebody using like uh a weapon that's maxed out at 1810 and is doing more damage but maybe it's not the same rpm Right, so they, they just balance it to make it proportional to the amount of damage you deal instead of the, the tick, the amount of ticks of damage that you do, which to me that just should have been done in the first place. So this is just uh, this is like a nerf and a buff at the same time. Um, blah blah blah. In particular, we're increasing the power of threat. Okay, so here's the other thing. Here's the buffs that nobody's mentioning because everybody's too busy. Um, um, focused on the nerf to suspend like I, I don't I don't really get how people are so upset or shocked about it like we all knew it was coming I mean it's, it's been it's been a little bit ridiculous so but but here's some buffs and I'm gonna talk about them because it's good threadlings increased threadly da threadling damage versus PV combatants by 30% okay that's substantial that is a, that's a good damage buff so I'm probably gonna have some that much more fun with uh, threadlings build like on swarmers or something like that tangles they reduce the tangle creation cooldown from 15 seconds to 12 seconds that's a buff to tangle generation now that means maybe you can like use some uh, of these other fragments Defeating targets with a tangle grants melee energy. Well, now that's been buffed, right? So everything, every fragment in here that involves a tangle has now been buffed because we're going to be able to produce more tangles. And it can go further into builds like threadlings, right? So if you're on swarmers, you, you, you destroy tangles, you create threadlings. So, you know like the byproduct of this buff to tangles it kind of like inadvertently buffs other builds like swarmers on warlock or uh, woven mail for titans using into the fray or um, or uh, sire charachne hunters using grapples 
right? So it, it, it inadvertently buffs all those builds. While you have woven mail, weapon final blows create a tangle. This is threat of transmutation. Maybe that'll be slightly more appealing now because none of these fragments that involve tangle generation or effects given to you from tangles were very useful because they're because there was a 15 second cooldown to tangles no matter what. Um, and you can pretty much guarantee that after 15 seconds, you can make a tangle without the help of any fragments because all it takes is killing a void debuff target, or sorry, a strand debuff target to produce a tangle. You can do that through exotic weapons. You can do that through um, the seasonal artifact mod, you know, like such as giving, giving you unraveling rounds for having woven mail. So you, as soon as you touch something with unravel, then they die, then they produce a tangle. So long as the tangle's not on cooldown. Now it's gonna be on cooldown less. So still not all that appealing to like build into tangles with your fragments, but all around that's a buff. Sever, PVE combatants affected by sever now have their outgoing damage reduced by 40% versus 30%. So this is a big buff, this is like, that is a substantial buff to sever, and I feel like sever is one of those um, strand verbs that is kind of slept on or misunderstood. I did a whole video about this on my YouTube, um, on my channel. Uh, I have several strand videos, like um, doing um, on my legendary build series, I covered all three classes on strand and I've done a couple other videos since as well but I, I I talk at length in those videos about different ways to build into strand and sever especially on like a Bayant Leaps Titan or even on Sire Tarachne um, or hunt strand hunter sever is a very extremely valuable strand uh, verb um, or debuff that if you use it right, like oftentimes on my on my Titan, instead of using warding for woven mail, because I can get woven mail by suspending targets, I use um, where is it? Let's see if I can find it. It's the one where you land threat of isolation. So this like I would usually have threat of isolation on here. I just had warding on because I was doing like master raids and stuff, so I was like really needed the survivability. But for most content, I would just use threat of isolation. Uh, that is landing rapid precision hits emits a severing burst from the target. So this is actually like that severing burst. Uh, I think it does some burst damage, but it's really the sever effect that you're you're getting out of it. So like if you're if you're focused on a champion or a boss or a, a cabal tank or a fallen tank or or something that can basically like one shot you or do a ton of damage to you, if you can set actively sever them, then you're basically giving yourself damage resistance. So like. If you combine sever with woven mail on berserker, like you're you're essentially stacking a 60% damage resistance buff from woven mail with a 40% debuff on the enemy, and you're stacking those two together to take way way less damage, like multiple multiplicatively 60% times 40%. Like your numbers start getting up into like probably the 80 80 high 80% range of damage resistance, which is just nuts. So this is a huge buff to sever and um, and you'll know when a target is severed like they have that uh, that scrolling green effect on them right whenever you do that to a target you sever them they have a scrolling green debuff like visually on the enemy character um, that's when you know that they're severed um, and you can so with your build you can like while you have a target severed and while you know that you can be more ballsy you can tank more damage so really like these changes to suspend and sever are actually gonna make you think a little bit more uh, about how to play like berserker um, and, and instead of just mindlessly suspending everything and crutching on the fact that you can always suspend with your 
barricade in your shackles. You're not going to be able to do that as often. Targets aren't going to be suspended for as long. Well, you just play. They didn't change woven mail. You're still going to have 60% damage res resistance from woven mail, and they buffed sever so you can get even more damage resistance there. So who cares if the target is suspended or not for a little bit less time when you have all that damage resistance? Like this is. It, this is just all around to me. It's a good balance. Um, it's a good balancing change. So I know a lot of people are upset with like the state of the game post that Bungie put out. I read that, um, and basically my takeaway from that state of the game was, cool. We're getting three new strand aspects. The rest was like I don't care about any of that. Like I don't know why that it was done in like six thousand words or whatever. Like it was just basically a bunch of nothing that I don't care about like this is kind of just like corporate policy like oh yes we're just you know we're a working company this is what we do like I don't care what are the changes to the game so the act might like the only thing that was memorable to me in that state of the game was we're getting new strand aspects which is going to be which I am hyped for um, and so then this update that we get today addresses a whole bunch of different strand things um, so as a build crafter and someone that likes to play like end game content and stuff like I just nerd out over this stuff this is exciting to me so like this short um, article that Bungie put out today was was far more interesting than the state of the game um, I don't I, I don't I, like I wasn't expecting any kind of excitement out of the state of the game especially when the showcase is just around the corner coming at the end of the month as well um, but I digress. What else are they doing here? Um, Threadrunners, Silk Strike Super. Okay, so they're buffing the damage resistance for for your roaming uh, Silk Strike. <clears throat> um, so that's that's a buff, but it's not a huge buff. Reduced suppression time between Silk Strike Super Air Attacks. Uh, vertical lift provided by Silk. Uh, okay, sounds like this is just some general fixes to the way that the the super works but it's not like anything dramatic uh, threaded specter so I haven't used threaded specter because I'm mostly doing endgame content and like ensnaring slam and having two grenades is just better um, I, I haven't tested it so I can't say for sure but I'm like I'm not enticed to give up one of those aspects for, th for threaded specter yet at least not on Hunter the way it stands in the strand uh, kit right now because I don't feel like strand uh, hunter is all that great it doesn't really have that many different avenues that make it unique to build into but this might be cool because they've increased threaded specter lifetime from 10 to 12 seconds uh, now it's going to tank more damage versus PvE combatants so your, I guess your specter is not going to like uh, blow up and unravel into tangles immediately um, allied players no longer have reticle magnetism towards threaded specter okay so I guess I could see how that would be an issue that'd be super annoying you're like trying to focus a champion and then some hunter leaves this threaded specter nearby and all of a sudden your aim is dragging over to the threaded specter because of aim assist or reticle magnetism, as Bungie is calling it here. Um, basically, it's like pr poorly prioritized aim assist. Is that is the major gripe with aim assist on console in this game? It's just like uh, it's poorly prioritized. It's not like prioritized based on where you're aiming. It's just like oh, something moved in front. Let me switch to the target that moved um, and take away your aim. Uh, brood weavers the wanderer aspect is strong when thrown but somewhat hard to okay so the wanderer i was actually hyped for this aspect when they announced it before uh season 21 released because they said it was going to be like a sentient uh strand thing that's going to follow you around like i i was picturing like a child of the all old gods or arc soul type of strand buddy uh but that's not a, or or at the very least 
Um, it was also going to be something that you can throw and suspend enemies with. Like you throw your tangle, it'll suspend the tangle. And at that time during last season, season 20, we had a seasonal artifact mod. It might have been called Untangler. There was a couple, but there was one where if you destroy the tangle, it would admit a suspending burst and you could shoot the tangle to suspend targets. Uh, or you could throw it to destroy it and suspend targets. So it was a really good strand seasonal artifact mod uh, that you can use with any any class, any build. So when they took that uh, they took it away come season 21 and they gave us the wanderer, so I thought at the very least the wanderer is going to like you'll be able to throw throw the the tangle or shoot the tangle and you'll get that untangler effect from you know the same thing as the seasonal artifact mod but no that's not what they did basically you just you you have to go and pick the damn tangle up to throw at an enemy to to suspend them that's all it does you don't get any sentient buddy thing it's just literally like oh your tangle can now be thrown to suspend like that is not at all appealing to me and i have not used this aspect at all because you can't shoot it at, like if you could shoot the tangle to suspend targets i would have used it um, but the fact that they made it just so much worse than that seasonal artifact mod, like just made it completely unappealing to me, especially, um, especially on Broodweaver. Like I don't really feel like the strand aspects are all that good on Broodweaver, except for, um, like mind spun invocation is decent with Weaver's trance and like Osteostriga and stuff like that. Um, so basically what they're doing now is they're, they're making it like that seasonal artifact mod that I was talking about. Now you can shoot it or you can throw it. And so it's just going to have actually way more utility because you're way more likely to shoot your tangle than you are to like go and fetch it and then throw it at a target. Like you can just immediately get the result that you want by shooting the tangle instead of doing all this legwork to go and get the tangle first and then throw the tangle and all the meanwhile like you might be putting yourself at risk and then you don't have your weapon out while you're holding the tangle and it's like it's just uh yeah this is to me this is a humongous buff to the wanderer and i'm definitely going to experiment with that in season 22 uh, when they make those changes i could picture something like this being very good on on swarmers um so yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited about that one. Um, strand, grapple, the grapple melee. Okay, so this is just kind of like some basic... I guess your grapple melee didn't always work depending on your, your, uh, your inputs. Like for me, I have charged melee and uncharged melee as two different inputs. So X and circle are my... X is my charged melee, circle is my uncharged melee. So whenever I grapple melee anything, I always just use circle at the end to do my like to do the melee. I guess if I was to use X, it would sometimes prioritize like throwing my um, doing my strand melee, charged melee instead of like finishing out the grapple melee. So, um, but now now they made it so that it prioritizes. If you hit your charged melee at the end of a grapple melee swing, it'll now like complete complete the grapple melee instead of uh, choosing to consume your charged melee instead. So I guess to me, to me it makes sense why there were some issues here. There's like some overlap between melee and grenade energy and like so I get why it was kind of glitchy, but it sounds like they fixed this. It's never been an issue for me either way. Um, some changes to the fragments. So Thread of Propagation, which one is that? They gave that uh, plus 10 strength. Powered Melee Final Blows grant your strand weapons unraveling rounds. So this could be really good on, uh, on Broodweaver. For, because Arcane Needle, to me, is the best like damage melee for strand. Uh, out of all the strand subclasses and having three of those needles that already unravel now it's going to kill stuff um, and give you unraveling rounds on your weapon so this has actually been an appealing fragment to me on 
brood weavers specifically are ready. Um, well, even even on Titan with Frenzy Blade, because you can get three of those, and uh, when you I think when you have woven mail, you get even more melee energy with Abeyant Leaps or something like that, or Into the Fray. Right, so with Into the Fray, you get more melee energy. Um, so you could use Thread of Propagation on Berserker as well, so that you can get Unraveling Rounds. I wish they would buff Unraveling Rounds, because to me they're still just a little bit... Mm, cool effects, but not as cool as like Volatile Rounds. There's not that like immediately pop, explosion, boom, like spreading Volatile to everything. There's just something lacking like... Unraveling rounds are just not making that impact um, that I think we all enjoy from from other um, subclass effects like Jolt and Weaken and uh, Volatile rounds, uh, Incandes or uh, like Scorch and Ignitions. Like unraveling rounds look cool when like you got all the little swarming needles all over the place, uh, but just generally speaking, it's not like it's not it's not a very flashy effect so hopefully they'll change that at some point threat of continuity no longer grants 10 strength so whatever um, I mean continuity has been such a staple fragment for pretty much all strand builds that <clears throat> I think the uh, 10 strength that you get from it was just kind of like what's the point and it's not really it's not really offering you anything it's just giving you a small bonus on top of an already like overpowered fragment so yeah they've nerfed suspend they've nerfed and uh, so therefore like continuity is kind of nerfed because suspend is now gonna be uh, seven seconds instead of 12 with this fragment but they didn't change the fact that it also increases the duration of unravel and sever and sever has been buffed so still continuity is gonna be very strong uh, it'll probably still be in everybody's builds, I'm guessing. And taking the 10 strength off of there it sounds fine to me. Like, if it was a negative 10 discipline stat, I would probably still use this fragment. Um, so that makes sense. Threat of Wisdom no longer requires a precision kill to activate. I think, I think that's the one that gives you orbs of power or something like that. Yeah, defeating suspended targets with precision final blows creates an orb of power. So, well, so that's a huge buff. It's just you kill anything that's suspended, you get orbs. Uh, it's still like I don't like using a fragment to get orbs of power. Just doesn't seem like a very optimized decision to me. Like you can produce orbs from your siphon mods and from firepower and heavy handed and reaper. Um, like you can just produce orbs left and right with your combat mods so it's still not even though it's a buff it's still not something that I'm gonna use most likely uh, what else we got threat of rebirth um, so this is the one where you finishers I want to say Finishers create threadlings. Oh, okay. No. Strand weapon final blows have a chance to create a threadling. Um, so it's just going to give you more threadlings if you kill bigger targets like champions or orange bars or yellow bars. Basically, the deadlier the enemy, the more threadlings will be produced by killing them randomly. So it's still going to be random, but it's just you get more for... Um, big targets and less for small targets and that's about it so anyways leave your leave your thoughts in the comments let me know what you think um, going on 34 minutes here or so already and like I there's already probably uh, in my mind I've already got a whole bunch of builds uh, that I've considered for strand now this kind of changes stuff up and I'm actually excited to start build crafting into these changes come next season and we still haven't even got the reveal on what these new aspects are going to be hopefully they're good because when uh, when the three aspects launched this season they were all just very underwhelming um, 
and I was most excited for Wanderer, and then I was least impressed by it. So now they're going to fix the Wanderer. It's going to be very good next season. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we get some new good aspects um, that actually can make an impact and will be exciting to build into. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.